Uh, welcome to the next session on commodity derivatives and risk management. Uh, uh, we, I will be taking you through the remaining part of uh, commodity index uh, calculation. If you recall, we had discussed in the last session how commodity indices have futures contracts are underlying and uh, because they have, uh, they have futures contracts as underlying, we need to uh, do some adjustment when the when a particular contract comes to an expiry and that particular adjustment mechanism is known as rollover mechanism. Now, let us go to uh, uh, let us uh, take a numerical example to understand how rollover mechanism will be effective and also uh, I would like to pose a question at this point of time to all of you. Uh, is can a index be calculated without a rollover mechanism? If so, how? Of course, we will discuss this aspect uh, today, but uh, just uh, you know, a, a I want all of you to give a thought that whether index uh, can be calculated uh, uh, without a rollover. Already I have given the answer that it can be calculated, but um, just think it over how it can be calculated without uh, rolling over when uh, the underlying um, uh, constituents are futures contract which necessarily come to an end at a some point of time that is on the expiry date. Now, let us go to the, our uh, last uh, session we were discussing this particular example. Let us say you have uh, one index which have uh, you know uh, which has uh, let us say this particular table shows the price of uh, underlying uh, commodity and uh, uh, commodity futures. So, uh, this uh, commodity futures contract is part of the index and this uh, commodity futures contract is going to uh, be expiring on 24th uh, January 2001 let us say. So, this contract is going to expire on 24th January 2001. So, uh, and uh, uh, index uh, rollover mechanism says that the rollover period uh, for this contract will start from 20th of the month and it will go up to 23rd of the month at a rate of 20 percent. Now, uh, how then this will be calculated? So, let us uh, focus on the detail which is given. So, on 19th January 2001 nearby price that is your column B whichever is given in column B nearby price that is M1 uh, price is 1200 and M2 price is 1235. So, on that day if this particular uh, underlying commodity will be a, um, if uh, on this day if, uh, if we have to consider uh, the price of this uh, com uh, commodity futures contract which price should you uh, should we be taking 1200 or 1235 okay uh, similarly on the 20th january whether we should consider 1205 or 1249 uh, 21st 1298 or 1212 so this is uh, you know the question mark is given so uh, i just want you all to you know think it over what price would be considered for index calculation for this underlying commodity futures. Now, let us go to the answer. So, this is the answer on 19th January 2001 we will be considering only the near, uh, you know nearby price that is 1200 we will be going into the calculation of the index. And on 20th, we will not only be considering nearby price that is 1205, we will also be consider, uh, considering the next nearby price of 1249. So, how do we calculate? Uh, what price will be uh, considered? If you recall, the index uh, rolling over mechanism says that for this underlying futures contract, the rollover will start from 20th it will go up to 23rd 
and at a rate of 20 percent. So, that means on 20th uh, January 2000, uh, 2001, we will take 80 percent of 1205 plus 20 percent of 1249 to calculate the price which is coming to 1213.8. So, on 20th January, this futures contract will be priced at 1213.8 and accordingly similarly the price of other constituent futures contract will be uh, calculated and multiplied by the respective weights to arrive at the index value. 23rd January you will have 20 percent of 1199 and 80 percent of 1224 and on 24th January 2001, which is the expiry date for the nearby contract, we will not be considering 1213, we will be considering 1229. So, uh, that will be considered that is the price of the next nearby contract. So, we will be oh, in a very systematic manner, we will be shifting from the nearby contract to the next nearby contract price over a period of 5 uh, over a period of 5 days now this is how the rollover mechanism will be done a com uh, index advisory committee can decide a longer rollover period uh, and if it is a long longer rollover period your rate is not going to be 20% it would be a little lesser than the 20% uh, but only thing it which I want all of you to understand at this point of time is that the uh, on the contract expiry date uh, the price will not be M1 will not be considered the contract will be shifting to the next uh, nearby contract uh, whatever is the value per, uh, pro, uh, available on that day that will be go, uh, going into calculation of your futures contract. Now, uh, as I had posed a question to each of you that uh, whether a commodity index can be calculated without a rollover, yes, the answer is yes and uh, how do we go about calculating uh, the commodity index without a rollover? Let us take a numerical example, a index, an index con consists of four commodity futures contract, commodity contracts on gold, silver, crude oil and, and nickel with let us say 30 percent, 20 percent, 25 percent and 25 percent weightage respectively. So, you have uh, uh, for this kind of a methodology, we will be considering all futures prices available for a commodity contract at a given point of time. Let us say on a given day, uh, you have a uh, 3 contracts available for gold, 2 contracts available for silver, uh, you have 4 contracts available for crude oil and 4 contracts available for nickel. So, uh, when we are considering uh, the index uh, not by not using a rollover method, so we will be considering the prices of all uh, these futures contracts. So, what would be the goal price which will go into the calculation of uh, the commodity index? So, it is going to be the average of 18,450 plus 18,658. So, this is going to be the uh, average of uh, 18,450 plus 18,658 plus 18,743. So, average of these three contract is going to be the price for the gold. Similarly, silver prices will be averaged over uh, M1 and M2, crude oil prices will be averaged over M1, M2, M3, M4. Similarly, nickel price is going to be averaged over M1, M2, M3, M4. Now, let us go to the, so this uh, particular slide shows uh, the average price of uh, gold. Uh, which is coming to 18,617, you have a silver which is coming to 32,787 and you have uh, crude oil coming to um, 4,679.5 rupees and nickel is also 964 by the respective weights 
given by the in, uh, index advisory committee. So, let us go to the slide. So, you have uh, 18,617 multiplied by 30 percent which weight. Similarly, 32,787 is multiplied by 20 percent and if you see the price which is going to be calculated um, for uh, the price which is going to be calculated, uh, price which is going to be used for gold is going to be 5,585.1 and sum total of all these four prices is going to give you the index value at this point of time. On that day, the index value is going to be 13,553.5 and this methodology does not require any, does not require any uh, rollover mechanism. At this context, I would like to uh, discuss a little bit on a concept called a roll yield. Of course, this concept does not have much of a relevance when we are calculating or uh, you know reporting an index which does not require roll uh, rollover. But this concept is very important when an index is calculated uh, based on the rollover mechanism. So now let's define what do we mean by roll yield. Roll yield is the cost of shifting between two futures contract. Now let's uh, take a uh, you know uh, uh, let's take an example. How what is the cost of shifting between two futures contract? Let's say a trader who has taken a long futures contract on the nearby futures contract. That is your M1. So, a trader has taken long futures contract on M1, but he does not want to close his position um, by the expiry of the month. He would like to uh, keep his option position for the next month. However, this contract uh, M1 contract is going to expire at a you know some point of time. So, what he will do? How can he roll over his open position? he will be squaring of his open position before the contract expiry or uh, bef before the contract expiry m1 uh, m expiry of the m1 contract and simultaneously he will take a long futures contract on m2 let me repeat a trader who has taken a long futures position on m1 let us say 20 days before the M1 comes to a maturity and he does not want to square up its position, he want to have a long position, a long futures position even beyond this 20th day. So, how, but he cannot do so, he has to, uh, to continue with the long futures position in the M2, he has to square up his M1 futures position by taking a short futures position during the contract expiry or a couple of days before the contract expiry and taking simultaneously a long futures position on M2. So, this is your this is how a long futures position holder will be shifting from a M1 contract uh, that is nearby futures contract to a next nearby futures contract. And during this shifting process, he may benefit or he may lose depending upon how M1 and M2 are priced. So, if M1 is greater than M2, he is going to benefit. That means, on the, con the day he would like to square up his position of nearby contract and he would like to take a long position in the M2 contract. So, when he when M1 is greater than M2, that is your market is exhibiting a backwardation. So, if M1 is greater than M2, he will be selling M1 and simultaneously he will be buying M2. So, he is going to get some positive benefit out of it and this is known as your positive roll yield. Similarly, let us go to the next situation where you have M1 is less than M2. 
So, if m 1 is less than m 2 that the price prevailing uh, for the nearby futures contract is less than the m 2, then when the trader will be selling m 1 and he will be buying m 2. So, he, this is a typical market contango market and this is a you know upward sloping market where front month contract is less expensive than the next maturing contract then the trader will incur a negative roll yield. So, let me rephrase or let me repeat if futures market is in contango where m 1 is less than m 2 the trader who had earlier taken a long futures position and who would like to square up with this long futures position by selling at uh, m 1 and entering into another long futures position at m 2 is going to incur loss and that no loss is known as your negative roll yield. Now, with respect to a index calculation, uh, with respect to a index calculation, if there is substantial difference between M1 and M2, and when index gets rolled over, rolled over from M1 and M2 without, uh, without you know, graded way, that is 20% and so on and so forth, what we discussed. Suppose uh, on a specific date, in one sort, if uh, a index gets shifted from the near month contract to the next near month contract, then there is going to be a huge gap in terms of the index uh, value, thus giving rise to a positive yield or negative uh, yield. And uh, this index is not going to be a consistent index. So, that is the reason why each index advisory committee comes out with a clear cut rollover mechanism mechanism so that shifting of uh, contract from the nearby contract to the next nearby uh, contract is as smooth as possible as smoothly as possible now let's go to uh, you know a little more understanding on two of the important uh, two of the commodity indices which are reported by mcx and ncdx uh, NCDEX has a index called Dhanya and this Dhanya uh, again is an index which consists of a futures contract, agree futures contract traded at NCDEX. As mentioned in this particular uh, slide, it consists of 10 liquid, uh, 10 most liquid agricultural commodity futures traded at NCDEX platform and it is a value weighted index and the weights are based on national production and the traded value. So, it, this index is basically uh, you know it uh, considered uh, it calculates the weight based on two uh, parameter one is the national production uh, detail as well as the uh, traded value at, NC, uh, at NCDEX. So, both these values are taken into consideration to calculate the weight. And only nearby futures prices are calculated, uh, are used to calculate the index. Hence, this index requires uh, to be rolled over based on some specific uh, mechanism. And how this index rollover mechanism and all the complete detail about this NCDEX Dhanya is available at this uh, link which you can see. And uh, if you click on this particular link, this link will take you to the NCDEX Dhanya, uh, NCDEX website where more details about Dhanya is available. You can spend some time understanding how Dhanya is calculated. And uh, uh, continuing with our discussion, uh, Dhanya uh, uh, components and weights are rebalanced every three months. So, which uh, which commodity futures contract are to be a part of the dhanya and what would be their respective weights that gets decided uh, in every three months uh, by a index advisory committee. Now, let us go to the latest latest information which is which I have collected from the NCDEX dhanya website 
and uh, this particular table as I mentioned is di directly I have taken from NCDEX website. So if you uh, see this has got the 10 uh, commodity futures contracts starting for, from barley to turmeric and uh, respective weightage has already been you know this weightage has been given by the uh, uh, by the in, uh, index advisory committee and uh, on a given day the dhanya will uh, take the value of the barley futures price into 1% chana futures price into 13% and uh, of course uh, depending upon the rollover mechanism, the future price will be combination of only uh, it will be either only M1 or M2 or combination of M1 and M2 as we discussed couple of uh, minutes back. So if you can see you have sugar has the highest weightage as of today uh, on this I mean you know uh, as on this date the sugar has the 25 percent weightage in the dhanya index. Now let's go to understanding the next index which is MCX Comdex. MCX Comdex is uh, you know calculated and reported by multi commodity exchange and uh, this is uh, one index which does not consider index rollover mechanism it considers all futures price available uh, for a given uh, commodity futures contract uh, to calculate the index. And uh, this Como, uh, Comdex uh, is a you know broad based index unlike NCDEX Dhanya, NCDEX Dhanya only consider the, considers the agricultural commodities, uh, futures contracts on agricultural commodities, NCX Comdex consists of uh, agricultural products, energy and metal. And how the weights are arrived at? The weights are arrived at the physical market size and the liquidity on the exchange. So both these parameters are taken into consideration to identify weights uh, to be associated with a specific commodity futures. And the balancing is normally done annually and unless a, you know some specific situation arises, the rebalancing is done annually. Uh, while the rebalancing from NCDEX uh, Dhanya is done every three months, this is the, this is rebalancing is done annually. So weights remain fixed for over a uh, specific for a given year. Now let's go to uh, the constituents of MCDEX Comdex. If you can see, uh, MCDEX Comdex has um, metal, it has uh, energy, and it has an agri index, agri um, a futures contract, and different uh, uh, different uh, commodity futures have different weights. With crude oil having maximum weight of 32.73% followed by gold which is 16.17 percent and uh, besides this MCX Comdex, besides the MCX Comdex, uh, uh, the uh, multi commodity exchange also publishes MCX metal index, MCX energy index and MCX agri index. Of course, in the MCX metal index you will not have the, uh, you know, you will not have uh, the same weight obviously it will have a higher weight in terms of uh, you know mm, that some total of weights of gold, silver, copper, aluminum, nickel, zinc, lead will be adding up to 100 percent. Accordingly you know the 16.67 percent can be upgraded uh, to arrive at the respective uh, weight for gold so on and so forth. Now, uh, though we discussed um, how this commodity future indices or indi indexes gets calculated, what is the use of commodity future indi futures index? Uh, uh, recall we started in the last session we discussed about equity indices and you know equity indices not only uh, you know not only tells us what is the you know activity of underlying equity market whether equity market is performing well or going up or going down uh, equity indices are also uh, uh, you know equity index values are also used to have um, futures on equity uh, uh, 
uh, indices and uh, lot of mutual fund uh, trader in lot of mutual fund houses uh, take position on equity futures, this index futures to mitigate the uh, risk associated with the underlying uh, mutual fund uh, equity investments. Now the next question is what is the use of this commodity futures index? Uh, remember in couple of you know initial session I think first second or third session we discussed uh, uh, how uh, commodities are emerging as a new asset class and investors are uh, interested to hold uh, commodities as part of their portfolio. So um, and we also discussed that commodity futures, um, commodity uh, physical uh, holding of commodity is quite cumbersome and it is not possible. Normally, uh, investment uh, or investors uh, invest in commodity futures if they would like to take benefit uh, from the portfolio diversification. So, um, another uh, you know another twist to the whole thing comes here that. Uh, mm, if investors are interested in investing in commodity futures, commodity futures come to an uh, expiry also very quickly. I mean, you know, suppose I am interested to hold um, gold uh, or I am interested to hold, uh, uh, let us say, sugar. Sugar is um, at this point of time, uh, we are experiencing a price increase in sugar and uh, going by. Uh, whatever you know being discussed in media and news reports, sugar price is going to go up substantially in near future. If I would like to get benefit uh, from this increased price, if I uh, would be interested in entering into sugar futures contract, so if I enter into M1 contract, so this contract comes to an end, so I have to roll over uh, from M1 to M2 so and so forth. So, I have to, uh, I may incur a negative roll yield and all. So, all these factors has to be taken into consideration when I am in, if a trader is interested to invest in commodity futures. Now, uh, com individual commodity futures. Now, uh, what uh, different store, uh, commodity exchanges are doing is that they are now offering futures contract on a commodity index. So, you do not need to take uh, uh, a futures position in sugar, uh, let us say almond and um, jeera and all many different commodities, you can at one go take a exposure in a, a set of commodity futures. So, how does a futures contract on a commodity index look like? Uh, please, I want you to uh, focus on whatever is mentioned on the slide. Uh, this is, uh, please see the contract specification of S&P GSI commodity index future contract specification. Please remember S&P Glo Goldman Sachs commodity index is a uh, index constitutes of constituting futures contract. Now, this particular S&P GSI commodity index future is a future contract on this index. Please make this part, uh, this uh, aspect very clear. S&P GSI is an index and there is a futures contract on index. So, it is like a futures contract at Sensex or Nifty. However, Sensex and Nifty it constitutes uh, the underlying shares, but S&P GSI commodity index itself is you know consists of futures contract on underlying. Now, let us spend some time on uh, this contract specification as uh, the, uh, the website from where that is the CME uh, Chicago Mercantile uh, we, uh, CME website, I have downloaded this contract specification. If you could see what is the contract unit, the contract unit is the 250 times SNP G, uh, 250 times the SNP GSI index. So, what is the underlying value? Underlying value is the SNP GSI index value. So, that is the underlying unit and um, 
so uh, you have futures contract on snp gsa gsai and you have contracts available for uh, near month far month and uh, near month mid month and far month contract that is m1 m2 m3 so uh, so let me summarize what i uh, discussed with respect to snp gsai futures contract that is uh, S&P GSCI is an index which consists of futures contract uh, for uh, uh, around 22 commodities, commodity futures listed at listed and traded at uh, Chicago Mercantile Index, Chicago, Chicago Mercantile Exchange and S&P GSCI futures is a future contract owned S&P GSCI. So, a trader who is uh, very bullish on let us say uh, metal pack, suppose I am I'm, I trader wants to invest in um, or hoping that uh, metal prices have bottomed out and at this point of time metal prices can only go up and he would like to uh, make some benefit out of investing in this uh, metal pack. So, instead of entering into futures contract on um, copper, tin, aluminium, so and so forth, it can enter directly enter into a uh, futures contract on um, you know on a uh, commodity uh, index. So, uh, so a trader who is uh, you know bullish or bearish uh, on the underlying commodity market. Uh, and com instead of entering into futures contract on individual commodity futures contracts, they can take exposure in the S&P GSCI uh, futures contract. So, uh, just give me a minute. This uh, got frozen. Okay. Now, uh, I will also take a, one minute to explain uh, commodity spot indices. So, many exchanges also are reporting commodity spot uh, indices and uh, uh, let us say uh, uh, MCX uh, wants to uh, publish the spot indices for MCDEX, COMDEX. So, those futures contracts which are part of the commodity uh, or part of the COMDEX it will it will find out the spot prices of those commodities and uh, prepare a commodity spot index so normally a commodity spot index uh, is uh, if exchanges are preparing and reporting a commodity spot index they normally you know use those commodity spot prices um, with respect to a with respect to a commodity futures uh, contract. So, let me read out many commodity exchanges also ca calculate, uh, uh, calculate and publish commodity indices. So, normally spot prices of those commodity which commodities which are part of a commodity future index are considered for index calculation. And for a spot index calculation, no, they do not use any uh, you know rollover mechanism or anything per se because it is calculated based on the spot price prevailing at for those commodity at that point of time. Only thing which uh, index um, advisory committee needs to look into is that which um, uh, which uh, spot price it has to uh, consider that means uh, a commodity uh, is traded uh, in the you know spot, uh, the spot market for a commodity is uh, can be any place let us say if I was mentioning sugar can be you know sugar prices can be taken from any market so which price can has to be taken into consideration for calculation of um, commodity spot index for sugar commodity spot index uh, consisting uh, sugar as a constituent entity. So, normally uh, exchanges consider the price prevailing at the basis center. If you recall in a commodity contract uh, specification, commodity futures contract specification we did mention about a basis center. So, the price prevailing at the basis center can be considered is considered as the um, spot price 
and also at the basis center uh, you know the location the commodity price can vary depending upon the quality specification so for a sugar there could be very very you know maybe a per uh, quintal there could be a price difference of 1 to 2 rupees a kg um depending upon the you know good or bad quality of sugar which is being sold in the spot market so which quality uh, which price should be taken into consideration again uh, the index advisory committee normally considers the price of uh, those uh, you know price of that commodity which has the similar quality specification as specified in the contract specification so normally fair average quality price is considered for calculation of spot prices and uh, the these spot prices these spot prices take into uh, uh, these spot prices are considered for calculation of spot indices so this is um, this brings an end to our discussion on commodity indices so key questions by end of this two sessions this session and the previous session you should be able to uh, answer uh, questions pertaining to how commodity future indices are calculated how commodity indices are rolled over what is the role yield is rolling over mandatory for il, um, uh, all indices and how commodity spot indices are calculated so thank you all of you I'm looking forward to uh, interacting with you all in the next uh, session i hope Uh, uh this last two sessions uh has been uh, useful for you in terms of understanding uh, how commodity indices are calculated and reported thank you all of you